Woo. Hey everybody, this is Marcel with Ernie Racing. Out on the Acme Moto 2020 KTM 300, riding up at Bear, up a Bear Creek, a Kelowna dirt bike riders area. And uh, off of Trail 1, there's this little, uh, little fort somebody made. The nice little fire pit and uh, a nice view, a nice view. Overlooking the Okanagan Valley, there's Kelowna way in there. That's Kelowna in the distance. Yeah. Hmm. And we got the sunset, or just the last bit of the sun. Damn. So yeah. Oh, I finally changed the lenses and my goggles. It's always a nice, always very nice. The back is bugging me dirt biking though. If I don't dirt bike regularly, like three times a week, the, this, you ride and you're always thinking about back pain. I hate that. Fuck, I thought I was done with that because the one wheeling didn't have any back pain when I'm riding the hub, the magic carpet. Shit. Thought all that stabilizing would really help, but no. And a little recap of the, oh, turn the light off. We got, that's the XL80 Baja, 9,500 lumens. And uh, you can see you got the Olins. Oh, the full wheel deal. And then the Olins TTX on the rear too. It's been so long since I've talked about these things. I think it was like the 2.9 something something model. Um, I can barely remember what this was called. RXF. 48s or whatever they were. That's a submodel. Yeah, and you can see I got I broke this, I broke that, but then I put that on. Never broke that. Got the full Emperor Racing pipe. Oh, I forgot to re-zip tie these on. That's what we do for little tricks. See the zip ties? They broke though, but it still holds the shroud in as they just go through the hole. Oh, I keep forgetting. What am I at? 262.7 hours. Yeah, I, I need. I ordered a new Samurai's. I need ordered a new blade and a whole spare, so I would never have this issue when I'm on the road. Got the new front fender, you can see it's relatively shiny. Tiger pull strap on the front. I don't think I've maybe used that very rarely. Got the giant loop Mojave bags, medic bags. I'm running the 754 rear tire. I got a little guard on the back you need. Look at that, that guard's beat. It's been smacked a lot. So you definitely want a rotor guard. And I had to change the chain stay. You can see, look at that grind mark in it too. With all that polyurethane, it's been beat up. You definitely need that. And then I got the Fastways kickstand. Pro Moto Billet, Fastway kickstand. A freaking, you got that big foot. Look at the big foot. The bike does not sink in like the round ones. Beauty. I'm running uh, the Emperor. Racing bark busters. I need to get a wider handlebar now. There's a video where I chopped the bar down just that much to comp. So then when you put the bark busters on, the bar is only it's the same width as stock. And then I was smacking so many trees riding in the south Okanagan that I then chopped the bar another width down, and I feel like I don't have enough strength. I'm not getting enough leverage. I'm so used to the mountain biking this year with the wide handlebars. Anyways, and here's their giant loop. Um, uh, whatever zigzag bag and then there's straps just for in case of problems oh yeah and then the 7602 those guys are awesome they sent me that and it's got a window you can see your oil level uh, you can see my oil level in there I can it's in the bottom corner because the bike's leaning and then you have the whole skid plate underneath right with the slidey as you know it catches a little bit of foliage but not no big deal on unless you're in a muddy and I got the Emperor uh, again, um, rad guards, and, with, and they have they go right across. See, they're right across. And then there's the little back plate you install, but you can't see it. Look at all the oil. See, the oil I, keeps leaking out of that stupid, like the power valve cover seal, and you got to take the whole side off from stock. That's the biggest side effect with these. I had to replace these OEMs. Filters. Oh, I changed the seat for uh, Enduro Engineering, so I get some grip, which is nice. I like these things really catch nice grip. 
and then put some tape around the stupid oil filter. This is the other stupid design with these bikes. Is like the oil cap can get super dirty, super dirty. So you gotta, and then when you take the cap off, the, the dirt is right up to the top. You know, like it's about to fall in. It's like a setup for like, so you have to replace that pump more often. I'm running the Amsoil Dominator in there. You know, there it is. See it? It's getting a little low. Yeah. 26, 9, oh, I can't remember what those forks are called. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. And then make sure you tighten your spokes regularly. I got the tubeless in the front and back, running nine and a half on the front and six in the rear. That's when it was just in the sun. With, uh, now it's probably dropped below that since it's not in the sun anymore. And I'm not moving. Anyways, guys, just some information. Oh, yeah, and I'm running the Amazon's pro propylene glycol 6040. So it raises the boiling temperature up to, like, what was it, 220 Fahrenheit? And then I run the coolant boost. Amazon coolant boost mixed in there a couple ounces. And that raises it even further. And uh, no fan. No, notice I've still, after 200 and whatever freaking, how many hours did I say? 262.7 hours never needed a fan the only time i ever have any little bit of like spewage out of the, the vent cap or whatever it is is try to hill climb in the snow in the winter just, man, you're going the slow slow man, you know when up, up, up in elevation you're done you're done done so and then you know, it, it, it'll start to bubble but again just a little bit of spewed outage if you're running the amsoil coolant I'm running the SAE gear oil, SAE 80 gear oil, Amazon's dirt bike gear oil. It's nice shifts. It just clicks in, click. You know, when you know you just give a good press click, because you know, before that, I would get with the stock Motorex stuff, and then I tried 2050. It would always have on a ride, you're going to have like five plus neutrals. You're going to act, you're going from first to second. You're not going to get that actuation to be a nice click in the second. It's going to hit neutral more often. So that was a huge benefit there, gear oil. So let's get some good information. And then I run the Dominator, but Interceptor works well. At the When we did um, the top end, the power valve, still no sticking on the power valve, but it was relatively clean. And the top, um, that was the dirtiest part is the power valve. Because really you get no wash cleanup in there. Um, otherwise the top of uh, the piston was super clean. Didn't even need to change the piston at, what was it, 240 hours or something? Can't remember, 239, 238? And so the Dominator was keeping everything clean, along with the power valve, power valves, just as a little bit of buildup, but nothing sticking, nothing uh, like you might normally see. So if I ran the Interceptor, it has a little more detergent package, you know, maybe it'd be a little better, but either way, 240 hours for rebuild is perfect. Okay, guys, that's it. Let's, oh yeah, and I'm running the, the Bridgestone M16 front. I really like the tire, except for like any front tire, when I run low pressure, I lose knobbies. Yeah, you can see all in the side knobs. Look at it, you know, going, going, gone. Yeah, shit. And oh yeah, protector, you need that too. My poor Owens gets super beat up on the bottom. Super beat up. It is what it is. You can't stop it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, guys, we gotta keep riding. Cheers, bye, I'm getting, I'm, oh, I read the anti-fog wipes on the thing, so it still didn't fog up after all this time, but I'm sweating under there, holy smokes, whoo. And I run a breather thing now, it really helps breathing. Any racing, October like 18th, I think, 2022.